Now in this video we are going to create a sampler using only modules and this is a really cool experiment because it shows you how powerful these are and how easy they are to get to work together. What I've done is I've created a new ensemble using Apple N, uh, it may be Control, uh, Control N if you're using a Windows machine, and it will give us this panel, panel layout, it's just this very minimal header. Uh, once you enter edit mode by clicking on this toggle or going F1, you can go into the instrument or into the ensemble itself, which you'll see is just this empty instrument in the middle. And then we have two ins and two outs. Now because we're creating a sampler, we're not going to be sending any audio into it. So I'm going to get rid of these ins because we don't need those. And uh, simplicity is always better when building things in Reactor, I find. So I'm going to delete these ins inside the instrument as well. Now you see that we're inside the instrument and we have these two audio outs, uh, left and right. Uh, with an audio voice combiner in front of them. So here's the level of the ensemble and here's the level of the instrument. Now our first order of business is to actually put a sampler in here. So I'm going to go right click to bring up the context menu, built-in module, uh, sampler, and then choose this top option, sampler. And that will give us our sampler module, just place it in the structure. And what you see is that there's this little waveform icon indicating that it is a sample player. And then we have a variety of uh, ports. So we have this out port that eventually will be connected to these audio outs. And we also have a P, a trig, and an A port. Now the first thing that we need to do uh, with a sampler is to tell it essentially when to play the samples. And so we need something to tell it how to trigger, when to trigger, uh, precisely. So I'm going to go built-in module, and I'm going to go MIDI in. These are all the MIDI in functions that we have in our modules and I'm going to go gate. Now the gate of course is what allows the sampler to know when to play a sample. So when the gate produces a certain signal it's going to go into this trigger and it will tell the sampler okay now's the time to play a sample because otherwise the sampler really has no way to know when to play it. Uh, but furthermore the sampler needs to know uh, at what pitch to play the sample or in the case of a sample map which sample to play, right? Because if we're using a sample map, we have a variety of samples. And we want to be able to choose between those samples when we play different keys on the keyboard. Or we want to be able to choose to transpose that sample up or down uh, with different keys. So to that end, we are going to go built-in module, MIDI in again, and we are going to go note pitch. And this is going to allow us to tell the sampler what pitch of the sample to play or what sample to play. Uh, assuming that we're using a sample map. Okay, so now we have these two things. They're not connected to anything. Uh, and, and now we need to connect them. So this gate is going to go into trigger. This allows us to trigger trigger a sample. And this info hints is, is a handy guide when you're, when you're starting to build things because you can hover over any of these ports and it will tell you essentially what that port is there for it will frequently give you a range of values as well, kind of a range of appropriate values. In this case, you see that the last sentence here says, uh, usually connected to a gate source. So that's, that's our clue that we need to use gate with this trig port. Now, note pitch is kind of the same deal. Uh, it tells us that this is input for logarithmic pitch control and semitones. Uh, and so this would be a good thing to connect to this P port. Now, A is amplitude. And you may have thought of, uh, thought of this already that... Uh, we want a way to control the sound of the sample through time, right? I mean, we can just trigger it and have it play the sample in its entirety, uh, you know, from start to finish. But we may want to be able to use an ADSR envelope, an attack, decay, sustain, and release envelope that essentially allows us to control the volume of the sample through time. So what we're going to do here is add an envelope before we connect anything to this A port. So I'm going to go built-in module, LFO envelope, and I'm going to take this ADSR one, kind of middle of this uh, fourth list down, drop that in, and you'll see that now we have this little kind of uh, envelope display that gives us a clue as to what this does. We have an out port, as we do with the sampler, and we have a GADSR, uh, all, those, all those ports as well. So first things first, I'm going to, going to connect the out to the amplitude, because remember, we want the the envelope to control the amplitude of the sample being played. Now stick with me here because we're, we're almost to kind of uh, enlightenment as far as loading a sample map and getting this to go. So we don't have too much further to go. We're almost there. 
but you'll notice also that this has a G port and this is an input for the gate signal. Now this can be a little bit confusing because sometimes the ports are labeled differently for different uh, for the same thing. In this case we want to connect the gate to the trigger but we also want to connect the gate to the ADSR envelope to this G. So I'm going to click and drag to connect here and now this gate is controlling two things, right? It's controlling, it's telling the sampler when to play a sample and it's telling the ADSR envelope how to control that sample's amplitude through time. So it's, it's kind of doing double duty here, very slick. But now we have these ADSR ports that we need to control, can create values for because right now we have no way to control them. We just have the ability to control them, but we haven't told Reactor how we want to control them. So I am simply going to right click on the port and for each of these I'm going to go con create control and that will create just a, a control R pre-labeled for me. Uh, and once we go back up to the panel view you'll, you'll see that these are all created as knobs at the panel level. Okay so now we have uh, the gate controlling both the envelope and the sampler. We have the note pitch sending its information into the sampler and we have de attack, decay, sustain, and release controls for the envelope itself. And now if we go back up to our panel view by clicking on the panel uh, label in the breadcrumb trail we see that we have kind of all of these controls that are one on top of each other. They've landed on top of each other. So what we want to do is open up our panel for editing and you can do this either by going uh, command P or clicking on this wrench icon here. I'm just going to click on the wrench icon. You'll see that the background takes on this polka dot appearance telling us that the uh, the panel editing mode is open and now we can move these controls around. So first thing I'm going to do is move this release into position. There's another way to do this too which is that you can go to split screen mode by using the split down here at the bottom and you can actually go in here and say okay I, I want to select the decay knob. I'm going to highlight it there and then when you grab any of these it will be the one that you've that you've highlighted. So in this case it's decay. Uh, I want to do the same for attack. Oops and then I want to do the same for sustain and we can kind of space these you can either move these using your the arrow keys on your keyboard or the mouse as I'm doing I'm just kind of doing the, the quick way of doing it and now we have kind of a very reasonable and simple layout for our sampler we have attack decay sustain and release parameters we have this waveform display which has yet to be populated and um, we're pretty much good to go. We need to connect these outs so the sampler is is connected to all of these uh, gate pitch uh, envelope and so forth but it's not connected to the out so we're going to connect this to the left and to the right and you notice when I connected the left the lamps on these various modules lit up indicating that there is now an un uninterrupted signal flow. Uh, that's your clue that everything is kind of A-OK -okay as far as the signal flow. The yellow lamp of course indicates a uh, polyphonic signal and uh, on occasion you'll see the orange one which indicates monophonic that's the distinction there but you may have thought of something which is that we don't have any samples to play we have all of this architecture set up but we haven't actually played any or we haven't actually told the sampler what samples we wanted to play and this is a cool part uh, a cool trick that I'm going to show you coming up here because reactor has so much great content included in the factory that there's no reason why you shouldn't say save one of the sample maps from a different ensemble from one of the factory ensembles and use it for your own purposes in one of your own samplers. That's essentially what I've done. So I'm going to take a brief detour here. I'm going to show you how to load the uh, or, or save the sample map from one of the other ensembles and then we'll come back to this and we will load that sample map in here.